In this tutorial, I'll talk a little bit about strut support for model objects. Uh, I'm sure we all know what a model object is. That's the M of the MVC. For those who don't know, a model object is essentially a package of information that needs to be sent between different layers in your application. Uh, for example, from your view layer to the business service layer, or from the business service layer to the data layer. Uh, if you're having a lot of individual elements of data, it would not make sense to have them as separate uh, variables. Uh, take this example of the tutorial finder service. So this has a method, get best tutorial site that's called from our view layer. And the view layer passes an argument called the language. So this service looks at the input language and gives the corresponding output. Now, here we have just one input argument. Let's say there are like four or five different input arguments. So you have your own set of preferences for what tutorial site you need uh, or something like that. So let's say you have like five arguments over here. It's not really practical to have five input arguments to this method. It's actually very cumbersome to use the, you know, to use the business service in that case. So in that case, what you would typically do is bundle all those five arguments into a common object. And then that would be the input argument. So it would be just one object as the input argument. That object would have member variables for all the data that you need to pass. And then your business service would look at that object and pull out all the information it needs. So this is a common practice and uh, you would see, you know, lots of instances of model objects in any, uh, you know, any Java application. So how do you use model objects in your strut store application? Now in this example, so far we have not really used any model objects because you see here the tutorial finder takes in a, a string language, just a simple data type. And then here you have login action, which is not really calling a business service at all. So what I'll do now is I'll create a business service for login and I'll also create a model that, that gets passed from the login action to the login service. So I've actually gone ahead and created uh, these two classes. So first of all, I've created a model class for user. So it's actually the user information that the login action needs to pass to a login service. So I've created a user object which has the user ID and the password, just these two for now. Just for illustration purposes, we could have more uh, member variables here depending on your use case. But for this example, we're just using, uh, we're just doing a login. So a user ID and a password should do. So we need to use this user object in our login action. So I'll create a new member variable. called user. I'll import my model class that I've created. So now this is the user that I will pass to a business service. I've actually gone ahead and created the business service. So this, uh, what we're doing here is we're just checking the hard-coded string user ID and password and we are letting the user in if the user ID is user ID and the password is password. So I've actually created a similar login service. So this has a method called verify login, and this takes an input argument of the user. This is the user model object that we've just created. And now the logic is very simple. It's just user.userID, if it's equal to user ID, and the user.get password is equal to password, then we return true. So we're saying the verified, uh, the user has been verified. And if it's not equal, then we return false, which means the user is not verified. So this is the login service that I'll be using in my login action. So I will create a new instance of the login service. Of course, this could be different in a, you know, in a real world application. You would not really create an instance of a service in your view layer, but since this is for illustration, I'll just go ahead and create one. So I'll have a login service. Okay, I've created a new login service and I will say, I'll create an instance of the user now. So I will say user equals new user, user dot set, user ID, user.set password. 
So I'm creating an instance of the login service. I'm creating an instance of the model object and I'm populating the values based on what struts populates based on the uh, input that the user has made. So this user object is now ready and I can call the method of the login service. So I'll say login service dot verify login of the user. So now this is going to be the condition. So I'm not going to do a check over here. Instead, I'll just say if the login service verifies the user, then return success, else return login. Okay, so now let's go ahead and quickly run this thing. open my browser, I'll paste the URL for login.jsp. Now if I enter user ID and password, it works fine. So it is, instead of validating in the action itself, we are creating a model object and passing that model object to a separate login service, and then the login service is doing the validation. This is fine, it's not a big deal, but then look at these three lines of code here. So we're creating a new instance of the user, we're populating all the values, and then we're passing it along. This does look a bit cumbersome. Now we have two member variables, so it's three lines of code. So if it's more, you would have to set all the individual elements of the model object and then pass it along. So this looks very cumbersome. And uh, struts does provide a couple of ways in which we can make this a bit easier and we don't have to do this manually. Uh, let's take a look at the first way of doing this. Now, let's say I do not manually set this thing. I'll remove this off and uh, I'll do the instantiation over here. So what I'm essentially doing is instead of creating an instance of the model object when the execute method calls, I'm creating an instance of the model object when the login action is being instantiated. So we have the user instantiated always. Now, what I'll do is, in my JSP, my login.jsp, now here what I'm doing is I'm having a text field which points to user ID, I'm having a password field which points to the password. So these two are these two. They correspond to these two. So they are the member variables of the login action. So what I can actually do is instead of setting to the user ID and the password member variables of the login action, I can tell struts to set it instead to the user dot user ID and the user dot password. So remember the user ID and the password member variables are member variables of the user as well. So instead of setting it to these two guys, I can tell struts to set it to this guy, to the user object of the login action. And the way I do that is very simple. I can just say user.userID and user.password. So what I'm telling struts to is, instead of setting it to the user ID member variable and the password member variable, there is a user member variable, and that user member variable is actually an object which has the user ID and it has the password. So go ahead and set it directly. I would set it anyway. So I'm asking you to do it, struts2, so you go ahead and set it. So struts2 does this for us. So I don't have to save this. No, I don't have to actually do the assignment over here. Now this is, this looks very, very simple. So our execute method is just instantiating a login service, which is again something we're doing now. We wouldn't really do that in a real world application. So what we would have to do in the execute method is assume that the user is automatically set and then do a verify login. Okay. Now there's one problem here though. You see the validate method over here. The validate method is actually checking if the user ID is blank or if the password is blank and it's going to return back to the login page if any of them is blank. Now, since we are directly setting to the user object and not to these values, these values will obviously be blank. All right, so this will obviously show an error. Now, in order to use the user object here, what I would have to do again, just like we did in the JSP, I have to say user.getUserID. And user 
git password. So since we are setting it directly, what we need to validate is also the user where we are actually setting it. So this is another change we have to make. And finally, since we're not using these two member variables, the user ID and the password, let me go ahead and remove that. And of course the corresponding getters and setters, and I'll instead add getters and setters for the user. Okay, and uh, if I'm not wrong, we don't really have to initialize it struts, does it for us? So let me try removing this. So essentially, if it's a member variable of the action, struts automatically does the initialization as well, uh, if I'm not wrong. So let's try that on and test it. So I have user member variable with the getters and setters, and in my JSP, I'm setting the value directly to the user, and um, and I come to the execute or even to the validate, I'm going to assume that the user object has the member variables, just like what we used to assume with the member variables of the action itself, but it is one level down now because we are looking at the member variables of a member variable of the action, all right? So let's save this and let's try running. Open my browser now and I'll enter the URL for the login the JSP again. User ID and password. And there you go, it works fine. So we are not really creating the model object and passing it along. We are just asking struts to do it for us and struts instantiates the object as well as sets the values because we have added this into the JSP. We have asked struts to populate the object directly. And finally, there's yet another way we can do this. This method is, uh, it, it kind of avoids using this as well. Now we are adding the user dot in all your fields. Uh, that's the, you know, the model object dot field name. If you want to avoid that as well, there is a third way and that's called the model driven actions. Okay, so we'll implement that now. So what a model driven action does is it tells struts to that you are actually having a model object in your action class. And then you ask struts2 to, to do a few extra things to support that model object. So the way we have a model driven uh, action class is by implementing a model driven interface. This is from com open symphony x work 2. Okay, so the model driven interface Again, as I said, it tells struts2 that your action has a model object and you would want struts2 to help you populate that model object. Now, if you remember, the struts2 framework populates the login action itself into the value stack and uh, it exposes the member variables of the login action to the value stack itself. And that's the reason why you don't have to say, you know, earlier with, if you had removed this one, okay? Without the model object, we were using this, right? We were using the user ID and the password. We were not saying login action dot user ID and login action dot password. We were just saying user ID and the password. And the way it worked was that the member variables of the action were the member variables of the value stack. So if, if you assign values to the user ID and the password, it would internally assign the values to the login action, okay? So there's that level of indirection that's happening that helps us in assigning the values. So what struts2 says is, hey, since I'm already doing that for you, since I'm already letting you not worry about the object itself, the action object itself when you're assigning the member variables, it's just one more level of indirection, okay? The action object has another object inside it, and then you want those member variables to be assigned. Well, that's fine, you just tell me what's the model object, and I'll again take the member variables of the model object itself and I'll take that onto the value stack, okay? So not only does struts2 expose the member variables of the action as variables accessible from the value stack, it also says, hey, if you have just one log, you know, model object, just tell me what that object is, I'll take those variables also and I'll assign it to the value stack. So as long as it does that, I can access the member variables of the model object directly by using this, the user ID and the password. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. So again, in order to do that, I need to tell struts to what the model object is because say the action object has like 
five different objects. It doesn't want to take all the member variables of all those five different objects and populate it onto the value stack. That's going to be a mess. So we're going to tell Stretch to, hey, this is one object, which is my model object. Just take the member variables of that object and expose it as the top level member variables with the value stack so that I don't have to do a user dot. I can just access this directly. Okay. And the way to do that is by implementing a method. Okay. So now, right now, since I'm implementing a model driven, you see the error over here. That's because I'm not implementing a method. So if I add an unimplemented method, then you see here, there is a get model method that struts to expects us to implement. And the get model is actually the method that gives struts to the model. Okay. We are telling struts to, Hey, this is my model object. Now expose these methods. I expose the member variables of this object onto the value stack. So all I need to do here is return my model object, which is the user. And that's it. Now what's going to happen is starts to looks at the action, checks if it implements model driven. If it implements model driven, it calls the get model to get the object, whatever object we're sending it, it's fine. It just gets the object, looks at the member variables of the object and exposes those member variables onto the value stack directly, just like it would, it had exposed the member variables of the action itself. Okay. So now that this happens, we should be able to populate the member variables of the model object directly, just like we would populate the member variables of the action object. Okay, so now let's save this. And uh, of course the JSP as well. Let's run and see what happens. Okay, so I've opened my browser, I'll paste the URL. Now watch what happens if I try logging in. I get a null pointer exception. Why is that? That's in the validate. So essentially, the validate gets user as null. That's because, see, remember we had a new user earlier, we had removed it because starts to instantiate it for us. But in the case of a model driven, we have to initialize a, you know, a new instance of the model. So I have to say new user. And now this would work. Dot JSP. And there you go. We are able to successfully log in. So this is yet another way in which we can implement the model object in our actions. One way we can refine this is uh, notice we have just implemented a model driven and uh, the get model returns an object. Uh, since Java 5, we can have generic. So I can have a model driven of user, which means that I can directly return user. It's much more readable this way. Okay, so these are some of the ways in which we can use uh, model objects. There is yet another way using push tags, which we'll come to in a in a subsequent tutorial. But uh, these are the ways in which you can typically use model objects and I hope this was helpful.